Humanity Person of the Year Award. And this is awarded to people who have made significant contributions in advancing the cause of healthy longevity. Um, we have Dame Sarah Gilbert from Oxford for the creation of the uh, COVID vaccine. We had uh, James Lovelock, who had the pleasure of giving the award to uh, in 2021 for his contributions to climate change and Gaia theory. And we had David, uh, David sorry, uh, from, from Harvard, the geneticist. This year's award goes to Peter Atia, Dr. Peter Atia, who is a physician who started off life uh, training in surgery uh, with um, Johns Hopkins University. He's a graduate of Stanford University. And then he went to train in surgical oncology at the National Institute of Health. But he then pivoted and he became involved in managing healthy longevity. And I would argue he is a really important thought leader and advocate, especially in the United States. He had formed Early Medical. He has a podcast called The Drive. And if, if you've ever listened to this, you'd have to say, I'm going to have to take two or three hours off every time, because this is a deep dive into subject matter. And it's a great resource. I use it, uh, I listen to it a lot and take notes, but also he has written a book called Outlive, where he describes medicine 3.0, which is a new way of thinking about prevention and longevity and health. And he is becoming such an important figure in this space. Um, he is a just the recipient of this award. Unfortunately, he's in Austin, Texas, so he won't be with us this afternoon. And I'm proud and pleased to be able to award him this box, <laughs> which is the longevity egg timer, which if it was an egg timer, it would be extremely hard boiled. <laughs> this, is, this is a well, well-deserved award to Dr. Peter Atia. I want to thank everybody at the Longevity Forum for this award. It means a great deal to me. Um, I'm humbled by it. And I'm very sorry that I can't be with you all in person today to receive this award and more importantly, to converse with you and hear about what you're working on and discuss maybe some of the interests uh, that we share. Um, it's a great honor to sort of uh, hear from you and understand that the, the book and my podcast have contributed to your mission as well. Uh, and it's an honor to be a part of this work with all of you. Um, I do hope, and I believe that we are at a point where uh, I couldn't say we were five years ago or certainly 10 years ago, which is that uh, I think this is really a consideration that many people are taking seriously today. And that's at all levels, not just people at the individual level, but I've been very surprised by how much the work of Outlive has sort of resonated with policymakers, uh, business leaders, and things like that. I think people are really starting to understand that your, your fate is not set in stone, uh, your genes are not your destiny, and that there's great malleability to both how long we can live and perhaps more importantly, how well you can live. Um, I think one thing that I always try to emphasize to people, and you know, an audience like this is no stranger to it, is that is kind of the beauty of what I call the Trojan horse of health span, right? Which is what gets measured gets managed. And if the only thing we measure is lifespan, well, we'll eke out a little bit more lifespan. But if we really start to put metrics around health span, both phys physically uh, and cognitively, and also emotionally, um, then I think we'll start to see not only improvements there, but I believe that those improvements will translate to also greater improvements in lifespan. So. I'd like to wish everyone at the conference uh, the absolute best in all of your work, not only for your own personal journey and longevity, but also the work you're doing to help others achieve better longevity as well. Thank you.